Next, we will have Max, who will be using Python and Scrappy library to uh, do a basic setup in Wi-Fi routing. some kind of layered model of the internet. So who has heard of an OSI seven layer model? Okay, what about the TCP IP four layer model? They're like kind of related. Uh, no one really knows. Um, but like basically networking, you've got layers, you have like a certain kind of like a certain kind of thing and inside of it is another kind of thing and inside of it is another kind of thing. And they're all like responsible for their respective roles. Uh, so at the very top of this four, seven, five, whatever layer model, you have the application layer, which is HTTP. In this case, we're like getting some hypertext. Uh, we're getting some hypertext documents. We know how to request a document. We know like maybe what a cookie is, and we're dealing with data. Below that, you have TCP, where you're dealing with segments, and you're basically responsible for. I'd like to open a consistent socket to somewhere else. I'd like to make sure that my data gets. <coughs> A reasonable order. I'd like to know if like some pieces of it is missing, um, but I don't really know how to like find computers on the internet. Below that, you have the internet, the IP layer, which is responsible for um, generally routing to hosts across the internet. Um, and this isn't like the DNS, like what is Google.com's IP address. This is I know this IP address. How do I actually find it? And then below that, you have the link layer, um, which is actually talking about how do we send bits. Um, across a wire or across a room in the case of Wi-Fi. Uh, there's an off by one error in the TCP IP four layer model because actually the fifth layer is important, uh, which is the physical layer. And this is where it gets confusing because 802.11, when people talk about Wi-Fi, they're talking about protocols for the physical layer, which is like we have waves, like we have electromagnetic waves going through the air, how do we like put bits in them? And they're talking about the protocol, which is like, okay, we know how to put bits in the air. How do I tell this Wi-Fi router that I would like to connect to it, please? And here is a password. And both of those things are covered by 802.11. It just gets kind of murky, because like when someone says 802.11n or 802.11g, they're talking about the way in which we modulate those bits through the air more effectively. But when they're talking about 802.11s, they're like talking about extensions to add security. Um, really overloaded term. <laughs> So has anyone here ever used the tool called Wireshark? Okay, a few. Wireshark is awesome. Um, if you haven't, check it out. You can like look at your network traffic and dig into it. Um, so I can like open up that same uh, HTTP request, and I can be like, here's the HTTP part, here's the TCP part, here's the IP part, and dig into it. Um, Wireshark is awesome, but there is a much better tool, and that's what I want to talk about. Has anyone here heard of or used Scappy? One, two people. Awesome. Scappy is amazing. Um, 
Learning about networking with Wireshark is kind of a drag because you have this nice GUI, but it's hard to know what's actually going on. And in Scappy, all of these packets, frames, segments, whatever, are just Python objects, and you can interact with them. Uh, so we can take that same stream that we got from Wireshark. Um, I dumped it into a PCAP file. I read it in. And now I have this object called packets, which is 27 TCP packets, 0 UDP packets, 0 ICMP packets. And I can like print them all out. Um, I can see that, uh, in this case, Google's IP is like 206, 248, uh, 151, and there was you know, a packet going from me to there, and then there's like a SID and a SYNAC coming back. Um, but this is just an object. Uh, so packets is, acts like an array. I can get its first element. Um, and I can print it out to get this like nice, pretty printed view. And you'll see in there that there's um, an Ethernet layer at the top, which is that application layer. There's the IP layer, which has my IP, Google's IP. There's a TCP layer, which has like sequence numbers and stuff like that. But better than looking at packets, we can actually create our own new packets with Scabby. Um, so I can just create an IP packet, and I just instantiate this IP object. I give it a destination field, um, and the fields inside of the packet is just like a field in a Python object. Um, and this is kind of cute. Uh, because I'm layering stuff, the way that I put another layer inside of that IP packet is I use the division operator. Uh, so IP divided by ICMP is saying stick an ICMP packet and make this IP packet wrap an ICMP packet. Um, ICMP in this case is echo, like when you ping something, you're sending it an ICMP request. Um, and ICMP is saying, like, hey, uh, here's like some data, send it back to me, like, respond to my ping. Um, and I can actually put data inside of it, so I say hello con in there. Um, so if you've ever done network programming before the days of Scappy, you're probably writing C and like spending time looking at hacks and like what bit is set here. Uh, it's way nicer when you just have this Python object, and I can just print it out. And I see all of the flags of that IP packet are just set. And I can manipulate them like any field in a Python object. I can add in the ICMP. So you'll see that uh, my pretty printed version has this like inner bit, uh, which is the echo request. Um, I add in the hello con bit. Uh, so now I'm actually sending a echo request with a block of data. And then I can just send it. Uh, Scappy is not just for creating packets. It will actually send them down the network. Uh, so there's a few ways to send packets. You can just send one, and you can actually um, send a packet in a way that you get the response back. Also, as a uh, Python object that I can then introspect, and I can print this thing out, and I can see that it is an echo response from Google to me with that payload that I sent. And we can change the fields of these packets. So IP packets have a uh, TTL field, uh, which says how many hops that they uh, can go, uh, time to live. So I can send this packet with a time to live of one. Um, and I get a response, and I print out the source field of the response, and I see 192.168.1.1, which is the first hop. Um, I can set the TTL to two, and then I'll see this like other IP as a source field with the, with the result I get back. I can keep iterating one more time out. Uh, eventually at four, I get somewhere deeper, and I just wrote traceroute in one line of Python. Um, had I wrapped it in a for loop, I would have had a working trace line route in four lines, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's actually make a really crappy Wi-Fi router thing. So there's something called uh, 802.11 beacon frames, and that's the thing that we're going to construct now. Um, the beacon frame is the reason that when you open up your phone, and you're here, and you look at the Wi-Fi networks available, and you know that Helicon doesn't have a Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know that because there's nothing that's sending a hello con beacon frame. The beacon frame says, like, hello, uh, hello con, this is my SID. Uh, here is the different protocols that I support. Like, I support web encryption, or maybe I'm not encrypted. Uh, so we're going to make a hello con Wi Fi network to uh, you know, uh, get over this grievous error. So uh, we're going to construct this frame. And it's, you see that I've divided uh, four, four or five different things, we, uh, which is four or five different like, layers inside of this frame. These aren't different layers of TCP. Uh, of TCP. They're like just different parts of this frame uh, 
of this layer two frame. So the first one is radio tap, which is just saying like I'm going to inject a frame into my um, Wi-Fi device. I need a Wi-Fi card that supports doing this. The one in this MacBook doesn't. You need to buy an external one. And I can't get it to work on OS X either, so you probably need to run an Linux and VM for this to actually work, uh, which I did for uh, the demonstration. So next up, we're going to build a dot eleven frame, and this is just the layer two frame that's telling you um, you have these like Mac addresses. Where, how do I like navigate across this room? What computer should listen to this and respond to it? And all we're saying is we're saying I want to send to a certain address. I am this address, and this is the address of my. So in this case, I'm sending to outer one, and it's FFFFFF, which is just saying everything, it's broadcast. And then I'm saying that I'm the MAC address 222222, and I want to, like the access point is 333333. These aren't like actual MAC addresses and nothing is listening on them, I just made this up to create a garbage fake frame. And this is going to be a beacon frame, which is the one that says, hey, this is my SID. Um, and that is... All it's saying is my capability. Uh, the beacon frame says, hey, I know how to do this. And in this case, we say ESS plus privacy. ESS is the uh, extended service set, which says there are a lot of SSIDs called Starbucks Wi-Fi. I am one of them. Um, it's what allows you to have like multiple, uh, multiple access points with the same SSID that you can connect to. Uh, and privacy means encryption of some kind. Um, and then we're going to send the SSID, which is just a text field that says, hello, con, free Wi-Fi. Uh, and then this is the part with lots of hacks that's going to be hard to read in the back. Um, the RSN stands for Robust Security Network, which is another way of saying WPA. I don't know why they have both. Um, this is just like a bunch of um, encoded data that says, hello, I am an encrypted network. I support these cipher suites. I support this protocol for encryption, when you try to connect to me and you send your password, here's how you should encrypt it. And then we just put it all together. I created each of those different layers was a Python object. I divide them to smush them together into one frame. Um, I can print out that frame and you can see that it's very long, but it has all those layers and pieces that I put together. And then I can send it. Um, and What's cool is I just give the send, uh, the send p method um, an interval. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I give it an interval. So I send it, send it every millisecond and keep looping. Um, and that's all I need to do to get my computer to think that there's a HelloCon free Wi-Fi. Um, and this actually works, uh, which is really cool. I promised, uh, before I run out of time, I promised one neat trick about privacy. Uh, maybe some of you know that uh, newer iPhones, uh, your MAC address can be used to identify your phone, so newer iPhones, in order to prevent that, will generate a new random one every time you turn it on, so that like people can't track you in stores and uh, stuff like that. That is true, but what they don't do is they don't forget the set of networks that you recognize, and if you see a beacon frame for a network that you recognize and you're not connected to something, or it's stronger than the thing you're connected to, your phone will send a probe request to be like, hey, I know about you, hello, con free Wi-Fi, I've seen you before. Uh, so that's an interesting way to tag people out in the wide world and maybe see where they show up. Yeah.